डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माई टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन इन वर्टिब्रेड और स्मो रेगुलेटर्स नाउ इन इन वर्टिब्रेड्स स्पेशलाइज एक्सेटरी ट्यूब्यूल्स आर प्रेजेंट एंड दिस स्पेशलाइज एक्सेटरी ट्यूब्यूल्स दे पार्टिसिपेट इन ऑस्मो रेगुलेशन एंड दे ऑल्सो इन वॉर इन द एक्सक्रेशन प्रोसेस now in invertebrates for osmo regulation and for excretion specialized tubules are present now in invertebrates three common types of this specialized tubules are one is protonephridia which is found in flatworms and the larva of mollusk metanephridia <coughs> found in annelids for example the earthworm and in adult mollusk metanephridia is present whereas the malpighian tubules are found in insect and other arthropod now all this all this specialized tubule the mechanism for osmoregulation and excretion is different in all this invertebrates so now first uh, we are discussing about the protonephridia now the flatworm dugesia also known as planaria provides us an example of the simplest form of invertebrate excretory tubule which is known as the protonephridium now in the body of uh, dugesia two branching network of protonephridia are present and this two branching network of protonephridia they run to the entire length of the body uh, in the figure let me show you this this is the body of dugesia and in the entire length of the body as you can see uh, this one and this one Okay. this two are the proto nephridia now the proximal branch of the tubular network end with the flame cell so at the proximal end flame cells are present in this tubular network and the flame cells are the cells where the filtration takes place so here you can see the in the structure of protonephridia uh, this part network of tubule and this portion they have zoom so here on the proximal and as you can see this is the flame cell is present and this is also this is also all are flame cell and this flame cell as you can see they are surrounded by hemolymph okay. so the flame cell are the cell where the filtration process is occurring now in each flame cell a bundle of cilia is present and this cilia bundle extend into the tubule and the continuous beating of cilia produces a current okay so the fluid okay from the hemolymph drawn in the tubule so here you can see here also okay these are the cilia and they are continuous beating so that's why what is happening this is the hemolymph and the fluid is drawn in the phlegm cell now the fluid passes into this tubule okay so now fluid filtrate fluid from hemolymph has now entered into the tubule okay 
सो तो हिमोलिम्फ सी व्हाट इज हिमोलिम्फ हिमोलिम्फ इन द इनवर्टिब्रेट इज कंसीडर्ड इक्विलेंट टू ब्लड विच इज प्रेजेंट अराउंड दिस प्रोटोनाफ्रीडिया और द फ्लैम सेल ऑफ द प्रोटोनाफ्रीडिया और अराउंड दी ऑल टिब्यूल्स ऑफ द प्रोटोनाफ्रीडिया दिस हिमोलिम्फ इज प्रेजेंट so so now we have seen that in the flame cell the filtration process take place and this filtrate pass through the tubules of protonephridia so when the fluid passes in the tubular network what happens some molecule and ions are reabsorbed and they again entered into the hemolymph while the nitrogenous waste which are present in the filtrate they are not going to reabsorb and the tubule <laughs> are going to secrete them outside the body so now the filtrate which is having nitrogenous waste is known as the urine and this urine is excreted through the pores and this pores are present on the distal end of the tubule and they open on the body surface so simply see what exactly the mechanism is this is the hemolymph now hemolymph fluid from the hemolymph enter so the filtrate here the filtrate is form okay now where this filtrate is going so for example this one this one this one so this is the filtrate this is the filtrate filtrate is coming okay and this is the tubule this is the tubule now this cell which are present in the tubule they are going to reabsorb some important solutes and ions and the nitrogenous waste okay it is going to remove by this pore okay so this pore or the opening opens okay and it is present on the distal end of the tubule and this pore opens on the body surface of the dugesia and the urine is released okay so this is how the urine is uh, formed and this is how the excretion take place on in du, uh, dugesia with the help of proto nafridia and i am showing the entire figure now we are discussing about the meta nephridia okay see in <clears throat> most annelids such as earthworm having meta nephridia meta nephridia in earthworm is an excretory organ and this meta nephridia collect fluid it receive fluid directly from the cilium okay now cilium cilium is the body cavity in which all the organs are present okay and from this cilemic fluid the meta nephridia receives the fluid it collect the fluid now how many meta nephridia are there so see a pair of meta nephridia that means two nephridia are present in each segment of an annelid of an earthworm and this meta nephridia they are immersed in cilemic fluid they are deep in the cilemic fluid and they are covered on their surface 
on the metal nephidia on the on the on their surface envelope means covering of blood capillary network is present okay then the initial part of meta nephridia where the opening is present internal opening so that initial portion is known as nephrostome and inside the nephrostome cilia are present so when the ciliumic fluid enters into nephrostome so uh, as the cilia are beating so the fluid is filtrate and it enters into the meta nephridia okay so as the cilia are beating cilia are drawing the fluid from ciliumic fluid and this ciliumic fluid enters into the collecting tubule of meta nephridia then this fluid <coughs> passes to the bladder okay and finally the fluid <coughs> will be expelled out through the opening which is present on the body surface but before that reabsorption process is going to take place so first uh, uh, we are looking at this uh, structure of meta nephridia let me show you the meta nephridia first see this is the this is the segment this is the segment of earthworm and here this one this entire structure is the meta nephridia okay this this initial portion of meta nephridia is known as nephrostome and as you can see in the nephrostome this internal opening is present now when we look inside the nephrostome see in this is the opening and this is the nephrostome and inside inside the cilia are present and these cilia are beating so due to this beating of cilia the fluid this from the cilium enters into this opening fluid is drawn inside the nephrostome okay then the fluid the fluid is entering entering into the the fluid pass to the this one is the collecting duct okay <clears throat> so the fluid travel through the collecting duct then the fluid finally going to enter into the bladder and here in the bladder it is going to store for some time now before that reabsorption process take place so here as you can see this is the capillary network on the meta nephridia collecting tubule okay so some solutes some ions are reabsorbed and they enter into this capillary and the remaining filtrate fluid enters into the bladder here it is stored and then from the bladder with this duct and this duct is opening outside so this way the urine is excreted outside okay external through external opening now one more figure i would like to show you for example over here okay here you can see all the segment of the earthworm and here they have shown one segment and in the one segment uh, this green in color okay is the meta nephridia now in the nephrostome hemolymph or the ciliumic fluid because nl it's okay phylum so see ciliumic fluid enters into this nephrostome 
okay due to the beating of cilia okay. this is the first step then then in the second step reabsorption in convoluted section of tubule okay after reabsorption finally urine enters into the bladder here it is stored for a while and once the bladder is filled with the urine so the urine is released outside from this pore okay so these are the steps by which the urine formation take place in the meta nephridium of an earthworm okay. okay now first uh, see um, as we know uh, earthworm they inhabit they live inside the damp soil and therefore usually they experience a net uptake of water by osmosis so from this damp soil what happens water by osmosis process enters into the earthworm body first water crosses the skin and enters in the body of earthworm now the metanephridia of earthworm balances the water influx by producing urine that is dilute metanephridia produces the urine which is hypo osmotic to body fluid now in producing hypo osmotic filtrate the transport epithelium which is present in the wall of convoluted tubule absorbs solute and this solute in some ions returns into the blood of capillary network and this capillary blood capillary they are enveloping the convoluted tubule of metanephridia so we can say filtrate from filtrate the solutes and ions they are reabsorbed and they are entering into the blood now the rest of the urine the uh, rest of the rest of the filtrate is now known as urine and this urine moves forward it is stored in the bladder and then it is excreted out by the pore which is present on the body surface on the body wall okay so here we can say the metanephridia of an earthworm serves as both the excretory and the osmoregulatory function okay because the uh, it is excretory metanephridia is excretory because it is producing urine it is excreting urine and second thing it is also responsible for the balance of water in the body okay <coughs> so that's why it is both the function the metanephridia is functioning function of excretion and osmoregulation is performed by metanephridia now we are discussing the malpighian tubule malpighian tubules are the excretory tubule of insect now in the malpighian tubule the proximal end is closed and this malpighian tubule 
are immersed in the hemolymph. So here, see the insect body is shown. All the malpedian tubule. This is the hemolymph they are showing, and these are all. Malpigian, Malpigian tubule. Okay. So this end, proximal end, is closed, and distal end open into the gut. So proximal end, which is closed one, immerse in the hemolymph and distal end open into the gut. Now unlike the axillary system, Malpighian tubule do not use pressure filtration step. In urine formation, first step we know is the pressure filtration, but that step is absent <coughs> in the insect. So instead what happens? In the insect, see first from hemolymph, K plus enters into the lumen of proximal segment of Malpighian tubule, and the entry of K plus due to that, the tubular fluid becomes positively charged, and at, as the Malpighian tubule fluid due to the presence of K plus, it is positively charged. So it is followed by the entry of Cl minus from the hemolymph. Okay. So from the hemolymph, what is happening? First, K plus is entering. Okay. Then entry of K plus as the positive charge develop in the malpighian tubule fluid from hemolymph Cl minus enters. Now, as the K plus and Cl minus are present, so now water enters from hemolymph. Now, K plus, Cl minus, and water enter into hemolymph. So now, from hemolymph, organic waste, for example, nitrogenous waste, uric acid enters into the uric acid organic waste enters into this malpighian tubule so there are there are one is k plus is there in malpighian tubule second is cl minus there then water is there and now organic waste nitrogenous waste uric acid is there okay and all this all this substances they enter into the gut okay and all the substance they move along the gut finally they reach <coughs> by passing hind gut finally they reach into the rectum and the wall of as you can see the wall of hind gut and rectum the cell they are reabsorbing some of the substance so k plus reabsorb Cl minus reabsorb, water also reabsorb, but uric acid is not absorbed. So as uric acid is present over here, uric acid precipitates as a crystal. So now here this is the uh, GI tract. We know digestion process, and after the once the digestion process is completed, the fecus is formed. So here the fecus mixes with the uric acid. And this fecus and uric acid expel out through the anus outside the body. So this is about the Malpighian tubules. Okay.
now we are discussing about the green gland or the antennal gland okay see the anatomy of crayfish okay and here here you can see green gland here coxal gland the parts of the coxal gland here in this figure also see crustacea okay see and this is the dissected crayfish in see see the second antenna at the base of second antenna you can see the opening of green gland and this is the entire green gland so the green gland consists of three basic part one is end sac second is convoluted tubule and exit duct and in this we internal anatomy of female crayfish see okay. green gland and you see the opening of green gland so the opening of green gland at the base of second antenna <coughs> antennal gland or the green gland of crayfish these are the parts of green gland end sac labyrinth tubule bladder duct now in this figure also okay antennal gland of crayfish is shown so the first part is the cilum sac also known as end sac now second portion labyrinth followed by nephridial canal nephridial canal open into bladder and this part ureter and ureter opens outside okay so see in most crustacean for example crayfish and prawn have a pair of specialized excretory structures known as antennal gland or green gland so antennal gland or the green glands are the excretory structure which are present in many in most of the crustacean for example in the crayfish and prawn and where they are present okay so they are present at the base of second antenna now what the green gland is made up of the uh, the component of green gland so each antennal gland or the green gland comprise of a bulbous end sac also known as cilum sac so first first the cilum sac present it is followed by labyrinth cilum sac followed by labyrinth <coughs> labyrinth followed by narrow tubular nephridial canal labyrinth open into nephridial canal and this nephridial canal open into bladder okay now let's see how the urine is formed in the green gland so uh, this cilum sac the initial part of green gland 
the silam sac is immersed in blood lacuna okay so here let me draw one blood lacuna so this is the blood lacuna okay and in the blood lacuna blood is there so, so this ceramic sac is surrounded by blood lacuna. Now, now what happens? Filtration of blood takes place at ceramic sac. Okay, blood is filtered at ceramic sac. So, this ceramic sac produces the filtrate or the excretory fluid. And this excretory fluid or filtrate now passes through the labyrinth and also from this nephridial canal. Now in the wall wall in the wall of okay nephridial canal and the labyrinth, the cells are involved in the reabsorption process that is the selective reabsorption. Okay. So some solutes and ions they are coming out from the labyrinth and nephridia okay and the remaining filtered fluid or the excretory fluid which is now known as which is now converted into urine <coughs> that urine passes along with this nephridial canal and finally the urine enters into the bladder where the urine is stored okay then the urine enters into the ureter this is the ureter and ureter is open out by a pore and this pore is present at the base of the second antenna okay so this is how this uh, crustacean they are excreting urine they are forming the urine with the help of green gland or the antenal gland now I would like to show you all the uh, figure but before that let uh, read out this also this information regarding the antenna gland, antenna gland or the green gland. See either of a pair of duct, silum duct found in the third segment of a crustacea and opening to the exterior at the base of second antenna. Now the green gland or the antenna gland they function as osmoregulatory organ. For example, the antenna gland of freshwater crayfish, Astacus, fluid is filtered from the blood into end sac, also known as silum sac, and this fluid passes through the tubular labyrinth. And here in tubular labyrinth, ions and some solutes are reabsorbed. And once the ions and solutes are reabsorbed, this filtered fluid is now converted, is now known as hypotonic urine. This urine passes through renal tubule, also known as nephridial canal, and now urine enters into the bladder. And now from bladder, urine enters into the ureter and by a pore which is present at the base of second antenna the urine is expelled out urine is excreted outside the body so one by one i would like to show you all the figures okay. this we have seen okay we have discussed this this we have seen <coughs> Protonephridia in planaria. With this step, you can understand the entire mechanism of urine formation. Okay. You can see the cap cell and tube cell together. So, this is the flame bulb. Okay. 
flame bulb also known as flame cell and inside you can see the cilia is are present see the interstitial fluid filtrate produce travel into tubule and opening in the body wall protonephridia and planaria then in this view metanephridia of an earthworm and right inside malpighian tubules of insects now here in this figure the protonephridia of flatworms flame cell fluid cilia collecting tubule etc report the nephridia of annelids the malpighian tubule of insects here in this tubule of protonephridia okay see the flame cell how the cilia is bleeding beating cilia drawing interstitial fluid okay reabsorption then urine expel out so this is the opening in body wall then in this figure okay components of metanephridium so internal opening which is present in nephrostome then collecting tubule bladder is there capillary network present <coughs> on the collecting tubule and you can see the external opening excretory organ of an insect okay. malpighian tubules and in this figure okay protonephridial filtration system of flatworms okay. step by step you can understand the entire mechanism 1 2 3 and this is for earthworm right hand side metanephridia filtration system of annelids malpighian tubules from the secretory system of an insect 1 2 3 okay <clears throat> so with this we have completed this lecture i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and also in your studies My name is Manish Kostisar I am from Ahmedabad India bye bye namaste